so much for being here, Isaac. I appreciate it a lot. Yo Rahmani, thank you so much for being here. Before, before we start learning the Mishnah, I want to share with the Chevra. I would like my cats with the whole Chevra. I want to share with you an experience I had today. I had a chasna today. Baruch Hashem Yitzi. Yitzi's wedding was this afternoon. Yitzhoshan, the precious chasen, that sensitive, thoughtful, sincere person. And his chasna was this afternoon. And Yitz asked me to come to his chasna. And I was thinking a lot about it. Obviously, it has to be according to the law. And it was done, things were done very, very exact. Were done well according to the way with legal. It was done in a very good way. And then I was thinking, should I go to the chasna? I was talking over to my mishpacha. And I want to be honest that I was very, very nervous to go to the chasna. A lot of irrational fears. I could be honest that even done legally, we all visualize, are we going to be on the next, the front page of the Times? Group busted, try, you push it, you feel like a criminal trying to make a wedding. Nobody's fault. It's, it's unique times. And there's a, there's a strong fear to go to a wedding. I don't know. And, and obviously things were done well. It was done in a kosher, in a mutter eifen. But nonetheless, you're afraid all different type of fears entered my mind. And I was trying to think, should I go to this chasna this afternoon or not? You'll notice from my background what my decision was. But I want to share Messias Yesharim with the Chevra that I have to share with you guys, Yo Rahmani. It's top 10 from the most important things we've learned together in the last two months. Yaakov, I want you to hear this badly. I'm asking Tzvi Kress, Aiki Kohn, I'm asking that everybody memorize, you precious Ben Tyre and Aftali Wadler, who helped so many people, please memorize this Messias Yesharim. The Messias Yesharim in Perak Tess says the following line, Ellie Goldberg, it could be life-changing. We have to memorize this line. Please listen to the line, and then Akiva, listen to the explanation. The Messias Yesharim describes, he's talking about Zrizus, being a person who functions with Zrizus. And he describes that people are very afraid to do things. And he describes a lot, Messiari Animen Ari Shebederech, I'm scared of the lion on the road. He describes all sorts of fears that people have. And he says a line that please allow me to study with you tonight. He says like this, Halamadita, we learn from this, She'ein ha'yira goremes she'yitz'atzel, the fear doesn't cause the laziness, Elatzala, the laziness, goremes le'yitz'atzel, causes the fear. Now, I must explain this to the Eilam. I did not understand this for 30 years. I have known this Messiah Sisharim for 30 years, and I didn't understand it perfectly well until about two years ago. And today, because I understood it, Hashem gave me remarkable siyata deshmaya. So please, please listen, Rabbi Isai. The line again, Isaac Malone, listen to the line. Zevi Katz, Kaya, Naya Klitnik, listen to the line. Shlomo Guri, listen to this line, Rav Shlema. The Messiah Sisharim says that the fear doesn't cause the laziness. The laziness causes the fear. Now, first, let me explain what he means laziness. We think when he says laziness, all of us have a laziness. A human being has a heaviness to them, a slowness, a bias towards inactivity. That's every human that is not understanding the sogya of atzlus properly. Zrizos and atzlus, when one studies, Yaakov Kalish knows Messiah Sisharim very, very well. And anybody who studied Messiah Sisharim, Zrizos is when you're passionate about a mission. Zrizos doesn't mean to work fast. Zrizos is an inner passion about something which causes that you work fast. 
I have noticed when I'm playing sports, when I'm playing baseball, if there's a ball falling somewhere, I'll throw my body, dive, not caring about the consequences. I'll dive, jump, run to try to catch the ball. I'll dive, jump, and run to try to catch the ball. And then I'll see another person let the ball bounce. And not, so I am not more of a Zaris than them. It's not, it's not that I'm running faster, it's that I care more to win. Zrizos is an inner drive for something that then causes quick actions. Zrizim makdimim lemitzvahs. If you're passionate inside, so it comes out with quick external movements. If you care a lot to win the baseball game, so then you'll find you dive, you run, you give up your body, the inner drive to win. Now please hear this, Rabbi Say. When we speak about an atzel, a lazy person, the Messiah Sisharim, he means one who doesn't have passion for a mission. Now listen to what he says. If you find you're afraid to do something, he, I'm going to tell you a story. Years ago, a few years ago, in yeshiva, we needed somebody to take on a certain role that was a complicated role, and we needed somebody to do it. For the yeshiva, somebody, we needed a person to volunteer for a very difficult task, and we needed somebody to volunteer. I asked about five people, and they said it's much too dangerous. I can't risk, too much risk volunteering for this position. Every single Rebbe in the yeshiva said, I'll do it. Everyone. You can ask Rabbi Brownstein, the Misa. Every, so I started thinking, what, we hire all the tough guys, all the courageous guys, our, our Rebbeim in the yeshiva. Five, five, many Rebbeim in the yeshiva said, I'll do it, no problem. Five people not from the yeshiva said it's too dangerous. And they started telling me all the fears and worries why they can't. So what's the pshat? The Rebbe and the yeshiva are tougher. At that point, it was a couple of years ago, at that point I was first starting to understand this Messiah Sisharim. The pshat was that if the mission is passionate by you, then the fear doesn't become so important. If the mission is not so passionate, then the fear is increased. Listen to this, Rabbi Say. Today, I had a fear to go to the chasen. I want to be honest, an irrational fear. Dan Kalish was afraid to go to the chasen. I was scared. I was scared from irrational things. So listen to what you do, Rabbi Say. I could have sat down and talked to Dan Kalish, why not to be afraid? Well, don't be so scared. And you could work through, that's one way. But the Messiah Sisharim says that the lack of passion causes the fear as opposed to the fear causing the lack of passion. So you know what instead you do? What you do is, I reminded myself, Yitzhoshan sings at everybody's chasnas. He runs and makes everybody's wedding beautiful. I thought to myself, everything in the yeshiva we do is we want to produce a ben who builds a beautiful home and he's getting married, one of the beautiful b'nai taira. Erlich, Yerushalayim, this is the dream. I started thinking about the mission. When I focused on the mission, then I was like, the fear? The fear became very, very small because when we're afraid to do things, and it's a big aid to my friends, all of us have fears in our life. All of us have anxieties and fears in our life. Often it's not the fear that's stopping us from accomplishing, from reaching out to somebody, from all the different things we want to do. It's not the fear that's stopping us. I'm, I don't know, maybe it's a, I'm very emotional coming from this wedding to celebrate a wedding amidst the difficulties and celebrating a wedding. I maybe shouldn't say, I have stage fright, severe stage fright. I'm not talking. People say they're scared. I have severe stage fright. My friends can testify. I was at a minion with 10 friends and they wanted, a, and I was supposed to read the Aftira. We made a minion in camp early to make Kriyashman, the earliest man. And I, they called me up to read the Aftira. I was the Maftir. 
I started doing the Aftarah, I started shaking. I couldn't get out of voice. A friend did the Aftarah instead of me. In Bnei Shalom years ago, I was called up to do the Aftarah. Singing and that type of thing brings out a lot of the stage fright. And I was called again in Bnei Shalom with old people. There were probably seven older gentlemen, three friends. It was a tiny minion, 10, 12 people. And I was called to Aftarah, my close friend, Reb Chesky Shuk. Reb Chesky Shuk went up and did Aftarah instead of Dan Kalish. I couldn't do it. I was shaking. I have stage fright. And I want to say when you have fears, so you could, ra- rationalizing with the fears sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. Breathing is very important. Physical things, deep breath, there's a lot of techniques. I used to purposely daven for the Ahmed, especially Mincha Shabbos. I wouldn't do Friday night and Shabbos day because we all want the Srili Rubens of the world to daven for the Ahmed. You need beautiful voices for that time. But Shabbos Mincha, nobody minds if a guy like me davens for the Ahmed. I would purposely daven for the Ahmed to try to conquer a fear. And davening was murder for anybody who has stage fright. When you get after the words, and then my body would get so tight, I felt like I was going to need that soul, I couldn't breathe. And you feel like you're exposed. There's way too much left to the end of the bracha. And you literally can't get a sound out. You have to pause and take deep breaths. I did a lot of funny things davening for the Ahmad because it was so scary. On a regular day in the middle of the winter, I said, La'elo, la'elo, which you say in Yom Kippur. In, Ka- in Kaddish, I was nervous. I said, La'elo, la'elo. People thought I had big kavanas. It was like Yom Kippur that day. Lemaise, Rabbi say. I want to say that there's two ways you could beat fears. So you can work with the fear. Let's say there's a time that you got to get up and speak. Instead of thinking about your fear, think about the mission. I got to thank my dad. I got to thank my dad. The mission and energizing yourself for the mission is more important than worrying about the fear. I ain't afraid of my fears, said a beautiful friend of mine. The fear is one thing. There's a different sogya. If something so important and so crucial, you will see in your lives fears you have are just, oh, spe- the reason the rebellion, they're not more courageous, they're more passionate about the mission. So to the rebellion who are full of passion about the mission of the yeshiva, the task, which was a task for the yeshiva, so the fears can negate the importance of the mission, the fears weren't significant to people who were less passionate about the mission, so the fear was overwhelming. I suspect the Rebbeim and those people have the exact same relationship to fear. But if your passion is extreme, so then the fear melts. This is a tremendous aid to Rabbi Say in many things of our life. Learn to reignite your passion. Learn to talk to yourself about your mission. You will see fears of ours will melt and disappear because I'm so ignited by the mission. You'll even try to remember what you were so afraid of. Focus on the mission. My son and shine spoke today, so I'm going to share a visual, Yosef. This is my visual, Mendy Katz, Irving, for this sugya. In politics, so politicians are trying, the, the guy's running for president, so he's trying to get more votes, Reb Dovi. He's trying to bring more people to vote for him. Very bad candidates spend all their focus on new voters. Let's get another guy, another voter, another voter. What happens is to some of these candidates, they forget their base. Every candidate has a base has a group of ardent supporters who are huge supporters. If you're only busy trying to get new ones and you forget your base, you forget to talk to your base, to connect to your base, your new supporters are not as fiery and passionate as your base. A smart candidate energizes his base, is busy with the people a lot, and you might say, why are you making rallies with the people who already are voting for you? 
The answer is the more passionate your base is, the b- passionate base will overflow and it will bring in other voters much more than you reaching out to new voters and your base is not passionate. That visual Rabbi Say applies to many areas in life. Here's a guy who's facing his fear. So his fear, I'm nervous, the times, the, the chasna, what's going to be? All the different things that are flowing through somebody's mind, all his fears. But one second, so he can be busy with those. There's a base. Energize your base. Don't you have a mission? Aren't you about something? Did you forget to think about that, to reignite? We always have to hazard, review our missions, review that which is important to us, review that which is that which we want to be. When you fire yourself up, this is many aspects of life. It would help so many challenges. There are parents, there are parents that are having a challenge right now. Everybody's been in the home for many, many weeks and months and people, Savlanus is being challenged. You know how many people are working on patients and they're learning the wrong sugya? There are people saying, okay, and then they get frustrated. I think they're learning the wrong sugya. So they work on, and they hazard patients. They're working on the fear as if the impatience is causing the problem. The real problem is you're not on fire with the mission. What I would advise parents is to sit down and remember what it means that Hashem entrusted you with a child. Remember your dreams to raise the most sincere, beautiful children to serve Hashem. I just saw a chassan in a beautiful chuppah thinking about building a beautiful home together with his kala. I would advise a parent. This is what I would advise Rabbi say. The parent who's trying to learn sugyas of savlanas and they're working and they're getting upset at themselves for not any of Savlanus, they're studying the wrong sugya. They should actually sit down and remember the dream, the passion, reignite, get excited, the gift. You remember what it means to have children? That God entrusted you with souls that you dreamed, that you craved for, that you were davening, for this child I prayed. Remember the importance of family. Remember all your aspirations for your family. Learn to reignite, to get excited. Now all of a sudden you have passion. All of a sudden the other things that get in the way, you'll find you have massive savlanas. Things that were obstacles, fears and the likes seem to melt because I've been mischazic my passion. I've energized my base. And Memela brings in all different other things. I have tried this many times in my life. It's a force. I'm so thankful the guys join. I'm appreciative. Mailuch, my shachin, comes daily. Shmuley's always here. Yosef Casper. I handed the guris a gift that Maish made their cousins of the Kala were at this wedding. And I was able at the wedding, very small crowd, a, a, a barely a minion, and I was able to hand them the picture, but I want to gift them tonight with this vert. A vert I don't know if I've ever said publicly. I certainly haven't said it like this. And I want to say that this shot in the Messiah Sisharim, to me it's life-changing. It could be used in many areas of life. The fear doesn't cause the laziness. The fear is not what's stopping you from doing it. It's the laziness causing the fear. And there's a halach lemais, it's not stam. So it's a, when I was younger, it was like a cutesy. Is it my laziness or my fear? It's like either way, I'm bad or bad. It's like, what did Messiah Hashem teach me? Kalish, it's not your fears, it's your laziness. <laughs> so, you know, what, 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 like what, I should just beat myself up. Don't think it's this problem, it's a second problem. Who cares which problem? It matters a lot. It's not your fear stopping you. It's the lack of passion for the mission. And there's a practical nafkamina. If you fire up your passion and you reignite your passion, you will find fears that become less important. To the guy who's afraid to speak publicly has to remind himself that he's something he wants to say. He has to think, why am I getting up? 
And if he ignites his passion, but one second, I want to publicly thank my tata. I want to publicly be mechazik the next person. I want, there's something I want to share and give. There's something I want to do. And he ignites and thinks about it and re-decides to do it. He will find that the fears melt, they get less. Because it wasn't the fears stopping the activity, it was the lack of passion allowing the fears to be, the atzlus was goremes hayira. Yaakov, did I ever, I want to unmute Yaakov. Yaakov Kalish, did I ever share that with you? Not like that. <laughs> Does it make sense? Of course. Uh, if Tabi <laughs> says it, it makes sense. <laughs> I feel passionate. I do this. I feel passionate about Yanks. I think this idea is an atomic weapon. I said one application, my friends. I wanted to give you a gift for joining nightly. Yossi Greenspan, you're always here. I wanted to give you a gift. So I shared with this, this with you tonight. I believe this could be used every share in many, many areas of our life. We have to learn how to tap into passion how to reignite our passions. You'd be shocked we can do jobs that we're even dedicated to. Somebody could teach Torah for months and years and forgets to ignite their passion. You have to sit down quiet times, remember what you decided to do, re-decide to do it. Simcha, I'm unmuting you, Simcha Spurn. You hear what we're saying, Simcha? Very much. I want you to memorize the words of Messiah Sisharm. It's in Perak Test. Please say after me, Simcha. She'ein ha'yira goremes she'yitzatzel. She'ein ha'yira goremes she'yitzatzel. Perfect. I'll do it. I'll do it two words at a time. She'ein ha'yira. She'ein ha'yira. Goremes she'yitzatzel. Goremes she'yitzatzel. Ella atzla. Ella atzla. Goremes. Goremes. Lai she yisyare. Lo she yisyare. Perfect. 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 Thank you, Simcha. Thank you. Yeah, it's important to me, Rabbi Isai. I don't, Simcha is sophisticated, mature. I do that with the Chevra. You're talking about Polish B'nai Torah. It's so important to me. Guys, say words from their mouth. If I can ask, I'm watching your screens. You too, Jashi. Even ask your tata to do it. If everybody can please say the words with me. I'm trying this screen. I see all the names. Yosef Sabi, even Atayir Lake with Ben Tyra. Please say the words with me. Ah, oh, keep it on me. Who's doing this? I love you. I love you. Who's doing this? What a hero. Halam, everybody read those words with me. Halamadita, we learn. She'ein ha'yira goyremes she'yisatzel. Ella atzla goyremes lai she'yisyare. We learn. The fear doesn't cause the lack of passion. The lack of passion causes the fear. So we have a practical plan now. Work on your passion. Learn to fire up. Energize your base. And you will see fears melted away. I did not drive with Manny Kalish today. I did not drive to this chasna with fears. Because I thought about Yitzi and I just visualized him singing at all the chasnas. I visualized his sincerity. I visualized the Ben Tairi he's become and developed his beautiful family. I visualized Gai Shoshan and how much he's there for others. I visualize why Kestenbaum speaking to a young Bachar in Yeshiva about building a passionate home. I visualize the shmuz we said about Avram Avinu, that he dreamt of building a people. And then I said, are you crazy, Kalish? You're not going to go to the wedding? And I was trying to remember what I was afraid of. You should know on the way to give this year. I was trying to chazer what my fears were so I would feel, I would be able to describe better to you my fears. Please don't ever forget this, Messiah Shesharim. Ein ha'yira goreme she'yisatzel. El atzala is causes that the yira, causes is goreme that the yira stops us. That was topic number one for tonight that I wanted to share, Reb Davi. Topic number two, Viggy, is as follows. Thank you, Delhi Trav, for being here and being here with your precious Tata. It means a lot. Thank you. Thank you to the Trav Mishpacha. Thank you to the Rev Centers, Chevra. You are amazing. You Nachshins that jumped in. Amazing. I would like to share a second. I'm 
I'm more emotional tonight. You come from a chasna, it happens. We haven't been at one in a while. So I want to share, Rabbi Isai, a second idea. The second idea is on the Mishnah where we're up to. We're up to the second parak Mishnah Tesvav, and the Mishnah says, Hey, Mamu Shloishadvarim. They said three things. Rabbi Yezir Amrahim Amru refers to the students of Rabbi Yechanan ben Zakei. Rabbi Yezir Amrahim, Rabbi Yezir said, Yikavod chaver chachava v'alecha kishalach. The honor of your friend should be as important to you as your own honor. V'al tiya noyach lechais. Don't get, be easy to get angry. And here's the five words that I want to speak about tonight. V'shuv and repent. Yaim echad l'fnei misascha. Repent one day before you die. A person, the day before he dies, he should repent. So Rabbi said, let's get that halacha. Repent the day before we die. Hey, but a person never knows when their time is. So the Mishnah means repent every day of your life. Now, to just visualize, please understand with me. Me and Yaakov, we have a certain way of learning Torah. Manny, Maishi, Hudi, Yisrael Meir, I hope one day. It's very important to us that we try to understand what Hashem is saying to us with His words, what visual He's trying to create. The Yoyim Misa means tomorrow. We're going to translate Yoyim Misa as tomorrow. The way to read this Mishnah in English, if you know how to learn, is repent today, not tomorrow. Yoyim Misa means in the morrow. It's funny, little kids, they say tomorrow. I've noticed Yisrael Meir says tomorrow. He means at a different time. He's not even sure. He asks us many times, is it tomorrow yet? He asks us, he'll ask, is it tomorrow? <laughs> We've still never caught up. I've never had a day where today is tomorrow. But Yisrael make it. ask Yaakov. Yaakov, am I exaggerating? Manny, come next to me. Manny, come here. Please come here, Mayor. Manny, I did something anyway to the screen. How do I get rid of that? Oh, I did. Oh, oh. I'm causing problems here. Oh. So Manny, come here. Manny, did, am I exaggerating? Does Yisrael Mayor ask, is tomorrow here yet? Sure does. <laughs> <laughs> he always asks, is tomorrow here? There's today and tomorrow. The Mishnah says, repent yoyim achas, one day before your death. Not the day of tomorrow, but today. This is one of the most important principles that we study together. We're people of now. We're people of now, not tomorrow, now. Repent today. Ayat Bachram will tell me in September when the yeshiva opens up, I don't want to hear about tomorrow. A ben is a person of now. The altar of Nevardic would say over and over, give up a thousand tomorrows for one today. We're all about now. In Kriyashma, we say, Today. What, would we but listen to Hashem's words today? Be a person of now and today. It's very fascinating. They're very small chasnas today. I think a chasn dances with more people today than in the old style chasnas. In the old style chasnas, listen what the chasn does. He's dancing with Manny and he's looking at the next guy in the circle. And then he pushes him away and the next and the next. I don't think he dances with anybody. If you're always dancing with the next guy, you've danced with no one. A chasen today, it's an intimate, small affair. He can dance with each person. When you walk into a chasen, he greets you and you only. A ben Tyra becomes a person of now. I want to share with you, my wife helps me when I have a few tasks. I get overwhelmed and I find myself not accomplishing enough. And my wife will remind me, grab the one task. Do the one thing. Always be somebody. We're all busy people. But when you do this, be fully engaged. You're talking to somebody. Nothing else in the world exists. We're learning together. There's no 920 right now and there's no 815. There's only now. Be a person of now. 
That is what the Mishnah is saying. Shuv yoim echad lufnei misascha, be a person of the present. I want to say something, right? Sun and Shine mentioned that people are very anxious. What's going to be? Chasanim, two weeks before the Chasna, Yitzi did not know, a week, a few days, we did not know where the wedding would be. When is the wedding? Where? Who's doing what? How is it happening? We're living in a time there exists an uncertainty. When are we starting yeshiva? Is Sulam happening? How is it going to happen? What's going to happen? When's gonna, when are we going back to Eretz Yisrael, to Teres Chaim? When is this happening? There's a lot of questions. I want to say, Rabbi Say, I want to say to the Hevra that there's a great opportunity. The opportunity is to think today, now. There's a Pasuk that I want to share with the guys, a Pasuk we say Shabbos Day in the evening. God, please teach me to count days. Vinavi levav chachma and wisdom will go into my heart. People who count one day today, not to worry what I'll do for the next few weeks, the next few months. Counters of a day are successful. The power of today, right? Brownstein and I changed our careers in Chinuch. We used to view it, we used to view it, you have a zman, Elul's man, winter's man, summer's man, and we would try to prepare as man. We figured out today a whole different plan. We are less success when we plan as man. We try to plan, we look at it every two weeks. The bus comes Sunday night, leaves the next week Thursday night, we plan out those two weeks. Do we have enough exciting activities for the Hevra? Do we have enough shmuzim? Did guys get enough attention in that zman? We prepare for that zman two weeks and we review a two weeks man. The more you can narrow time down and think about shorter intervals, the more success you have. It changed our careers in Chenuch. We started thinking about the short picture and we started having better tekufas. Limnais yamenu, count the day. People have told me, I don't know what's going to be in weeks, months. Great, great. This is the time. Let's, let's make a good day today. Today, can we study together 8.30 to 9.15? So, but what's going to be in a week? I have no idea. I have no idea if the shvu is what the schedule is. I don't know. I don't know. You know what I know? That Simcha Spurn and I today have learned twice together and beautifully. That's what I know. Lim nois yamenu, count your day. Embrace your day. Organize your day. What, but what's going to be? What's, let's focus. Let's create a day today. Let's create a day. Of course, of course. There's something called Raya Sanailad. Of course, there's such a thing. But be a person who grabs onto today, who fully lives today, who push it. We describe in Yiddishkeit a person should have a Richas Yom and Vishanim. We give a bracha that a person should have a Richas Yom and Vishanim, should have lengthy days and years. A Richas Yomim. We don't just say a Richas Shanim, we say Yom and Vishanim. Yom means that they capitalize on a day, that they're present by a day, to be present and to be there. I remember once I brought a bacher for, a, I brought a bacher to meet somebody who, who, who it was possible can help this bacher out. And the entire time we were in front of this gentleman, he was just fetching how busy he was. And I realized the man has nothing on his schedule because he always has the next thing on his schedule. He never is present, so his schedule is empty. Be a person of now, of here. Dance with the guy in front of you. There's nobody else at the chasna. Be'ezer Hashem Bikarov will have chasnas b'reivam, and we want that. We want that. We want to celebrate as the whole chabura. But when you're a chasin, dance with the guy in front of you. You're dancing with your dad, he's the only one at the wedding. And then you dance with your brother, he's the only one at the wedding. And then your brother-in-law, he's the only one at the wedding. And then you dance with your friend who's the only friend at the wedding. Embrace what's in front of you. 
That is this precious Mishnah of doing tshuva today. The yoyim echad lufnei misascha, not the proverbial tomorrow, but the ever-present today. I love Yisrael Meir so much, and I love when he asks, is it tomorrow yet? And it just makes me think that I am not thinking about tomorrow. No, son, it's today. No, son, it's today. I never once told him today that it's tomorrow. No, son, it's today. It's today, Hayyim. Be very, very present. We can capitalize, Rabbi say, in a time when we talk, there is uncertainty at a long distance. There's uncertainty, but there's so much certainty. This minute's the certainty that we're sitting down and learning a Mishnah. That I'm certain about. I'm certain that together with the beautiful Hevra, we're studying a Mishnah that I'm very, very, very certain about. So I want to really thank everybody here for being this certainty that, that understands the power of a day. Count a day. Be excited about the success of a day. Be very present throughout your day. Enjoy the thing you're embracing. This more than ever, my kids and I have taken hikes. We go on a hike. What's going to be? What's going to be is we're going to enjoy each other on a beautiful hike. And the next hour and a half, two hours, we're going to see beautiful sights. I was so thankful Zevi and his mishpacha came for a nice walk. We had a good social, social, outdoor social event. We walked and had a beautiful long walk together. What's going to be is you're going to be present today. You're going to be present here. You're going to embrace the now. That's what's going to be. And that's what this Mishnah says. Do tshuva today, not tomorrow. Be a person who's not planning next year, next man, next time, next. No, 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 not next time. Be a person of now. We have spoken about my favorite Pasuk many, many times, but I am going to say it again if Chaim Guri allows me. One of my favorite Pesukim in the world, the Pasuk says that all time I don't say, what is it? Are you with the good old days? The Olam knows I can't stand that. You're on a family trip. You say, remember we went up, I'm living now. It was wonderful then, but I'm enjoying the present. In every camp, the old color war used to be, the old base medrash guys, the old team, the old players. Jordan was great, but enjoy the guy. What's the guy today? Enjoy. I forgot his name this minute. It's a weird day. LeBron. LeBron. Nobody said it here. I know LeBron James. Jordan was great, but I'm enjoy LeBron now. The nonsense of celebrating the old. It was the good old days. I'm not caring who's better, who's worse. I care that you enjoy the now. The nonsense that people make in the good old days, the old color war and camp, the old base med- it's the best right now, right now. Al time I don't say said the smartest man who ever lived. What is it? The good old days. That's not intelligent. It's a bunch of hogwash. It's gewaldig right now. Present is gewaldig. Learn to embrace the now. Learn to appreciate the now. To celebrate what we have at this moment. That is what's important. I'm going to ask Rabbi Say, I need that song right now, the song I Ain't Afraid of My Fears. I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask that beautiful, beautiful song, I Ain't Afraid of My Fears. (laughs) I'm going to ask, I'm going to invite David to come on the stage, to come on. Yak, I have it, I have it, Yak. I'm going to ask David Edel and thank him for allowing us to have the share tonight and to share, I need that song, but maybe even twice. Tonight we're talking about, I ain't afraid of my fears. And we all have our anxieties and our fears, but we're gonna get our, our, we're gonna get our passions fired up to be able to face our fears, to be able to overcome our fears. That is the song of tonight. I'm gonna to ask David to please play that song. He's coming, he's coming in a second. This is a live performance. No, I didn't take guitar and me and Manny will not be playing that, I assure you. Outstanding.
We're getting it. We're getting it. <laughs> okay, we're getting this. Hold, hold your horses. Everybody say. Uh uh. that song and I hope you appreciate it also as well. D David, that was incredible. That was incredible. Well, let me unmute. Yehuda Roll is here. I need to hear his beautiful voice. Yehuda, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. Baruch Hashem. That first time we're all together, I want you to start the songs, Yehuda. I'm all for it. It means so much that you're here. Thank you, Yehuda. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Wow, fantastic, fantastic. Yaakov, do you see, do you see Yosef Casper? I need to hear his voice. Do you see him? I'm on it. Thank you, thank you. Let's get him on. I'll raise you, though. <laughs> I don't even know how to work this. I think you win, hands down. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Do you have him, Yak? David Barkani's here. Bless your soul, David. Thank you. We need to hear more of David, that's for sure. Got to get Shimmy back on. You see him, Yak? Not seeing Mark. him. What? I'm not seeing him. Oh, let's see if we can find him. I see Yisrael Newman. Oh, no. I see Yisrael Newman's here. We'll get, we'll get, put up Yisrael Newman, Yak, if you don't mind. Thank you. Oh, that, how are you? Baruch Hashem, I'm better. <laughs> I want to hear your voice this time. My pleasure. My you greatest pleasure. Something, but you pick the song. The stem of the island likes that type, but I think it's getting a little bit uh, used. I don't think so at all, but tonight let's do a different one. Which song do you want to do tonight? 
Rebbe wants something frailer or something. Shuvu. Slower I and have a shuvu. The rumors are you have a shuvu that's. <sighs> oh no. <laughs> okay, whatever Rebbe said, sure. Give me one second. I just have to find the key. This one goes by Yisrael, right, Rebbe Yisrael, Rebbe Yisrael. Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you, Yisrael. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rabbi. Thank you for the opportunity again. Rabbi Said, we're going to have a grand finale. We're going to, I'm going to ask Chaim and Shlomo. This Yaakov I have covered. I'm going to ask Chaim and Shlomo to sing a song for the Hevra. I'm going to distance and allow Chaim and Shlomo, ask Chaim and Shlomo to share a beautiful song with the Hevra. Here's Chaim and Shlomo. Hi, Rabbi Kalish. <laughs> <laughs> that was mine. It was your Hashem Hashem Yeah. <laughs> 
Rebavi, 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 Thank you, Rabbi Isai. I want to close with that pasuk. Limna is yamenu kein hayda. Prayer to Hashem. That limna is yamenu to count our days kein hayda. Hashem should teach us to appreciate every day, to be present by every day, and then certainly the Navi Levav Chachma, wisdom will enter our heart. If we are present, if we appreciate today, yesterday was wonderful. Tomorrow is going to be tomorrow, Yisrael Mayor. it's coming tomorrow. But I'm going to be here today and enjoy today, be present today. Certainly, the Navi Levav Chachma, great wisdom will enter our hearts. All of us should be Zeicha and specifically take advantage of the situation we're in, where maybe tomorrow's a little cloudy. And two weeks is very cloudy. And many months later, is very, we just don't know, but we know today. So let's chap around to create and enjoy and celebrate and appreciate a very precious day of today. Have a wonderful, wonderful night, Rabbi Say. Thank you so much. Have a great, great night.